say India. Yes. And then if you have any questions, queries, any points, we will see that in our presentation. And the Indonesian members to stand up, and for us, the regional members, to show our appreciation of thanks for the hard work that they have put in making this global land forum possible. So, there we and the rest of the KPA, uh, Indonesian CSOs, can you please stand up and uh, we can give our appreciation? So the next four days will be challenging and as what Jagat said, uh, I hope that we as Asians, as hosts also of this Global Land Forum, will extend our support to our Indonesian members in making this a memorable uh, event. Now going to, the, going to the agenda, may I add maybe uh, towards the end the call, for, the call for proposal for the hosting of the venue of the next regional assembly. Uh, thank you, Don. It's uh, the additional point. So may I request to approve the today's agenda? So if you allow me, then I'm going to announce the name. Okay. It's a good news is we are very gender balanced. It's uh, Anish Kumar from India. Please stand up. If you, if, you, if you agree, please stand up. And Tila Martha from Ind <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> Tila Martha is on the way, but uh, as for my executive members, she said that she has accepted. So if this is accepted, please give the big clap, then I invite you. Okay. So, uh, I would like to invite Anish Kumar to chair the sessions, remaining sessions, and uh, Martha will join with you later on. Good morning, everybody. So, thank you for Jagatbai and uh, Asian leaders to elect me for this chair as a session till two o'clock. Till five o'clock, but I'm I, I'm only here at till two. So, then according to the agenda, the next program, then, then next, I will. Happy to invite uh, Sarolin because uh, all of us know he is going to present the action status report what we did in last school Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstan Assembly. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, new chair of the Regional Assembly of ILC Asia. Um, we are going to present in a light version of the report that you have because uh, based on the new operation model of the ILC, the process of reporting of every program will be in your own membership platform. It's not in this uh, regional forum, but 
uh, we are obliged to uh, report in a light version of all the initiative that we have in this region. So this is the light version of the report. Uh, we create a very short video first, uh, maybe one minute. Then after that, I will elaborate a little bit. And after that, I'm asking if any additions from um, the host of the initiative, especially, but also uh, not limited to all members. Please, Harabi, can you uh, show us a short video before I start to uh, present? Yeah, uh, this uh, reflects what you have done in the uh, whole two months, 12 months from September 2017 until now, September uh, 2018. And um, uh, we are ha very happy that all, mostly all the activity uh, is done very well. And uh, we got also your report, uh, very well report. And on behalf of uh, ISJ, we are... Uh, uh, really uh, happy and um, honored to what you have done in the full year uh, observations. And we have 12 communion based initiatives, which is already quite uh, developed. And we have two new ones. One is um, proposed by a group of uh, so called family farming which is actually quite uh, developed in global level, but in regional level, it just started. Uh, I now, maybe stand up, I now, that the hosting of this, uh, I now and AFA. AFA? AFA? Ah, I now, yeah. So they just started this initiative with the group, and the other one is, um, an initiative uh, proposed by uh, a group of researchers um, hosted by one of uh, ILC members in Indonesia, Sajokyo Institute. Uh, 
it is now also well developed and uh, Mr. Amir is here as the hosting. Uh, those who are going to join the group of the research, you can approach Amir and all the, the other members for the further discussions on what he have, has been done and what, we are go what they are going to do in the coming years. Yeah? Uh, ensuring gender justice is CBI4. Uh, it's quite uh, developed now, has a good progress. They developed now, just now, I think we can see they share to us a good uh, uh, profile. And we hope that uh, until the end of this year, they will prepare a good uh, scoping studies on uh, women's situations in Asia. Yeah? Advancing Indigenous People and Rights, uh, hosted by AIPP. Um, they are, what, I, what we can see is that they try to, to shift all activity into regional level, not state uh, country by country, but shifted into regional level activities, such as making side events in the, in the UN-based <coughs> organizations, and also be a part of bigger platforms such as high-level political forum on indigenous people. So I think it's a good uh, learning for us, for us on how the regional in, uh, initiative can or try to, to transform. Yeah? And this is uh, locally governed ecosystem in Asia, which is uh, hosted by two members, two, two of our members, uh, uh, XSF and RDF, uh, from Philippines and from Kyrgyzstan. And now I think they will present in the, glo in the breakout session some research results uh, they have done on the locally governed ecosystem in many countries. And it's also good start to engage with the other big platform on indigenous people, and uh, we will see the result in more detail in the side event in 2025. Yeah. Um, this is also relatively new uh, engagement of youth because we consider youth is very important in our um, platform in our uh, regional. Works. Therefore, it is now started this year, and uh, they have meeting uh, online. Normally, they use online meetings to to design their work, to do action plan together, and it is uh, led by uh, RMI from Indonesia and co-led by, as far as my concerns, uh, Ekta Parisa from India. So a good thing is that they try now to connect their uh, guideline initiative and actions into the GLTN, GLTN uh, tools, yeah? which is uh, for me is a good process of connecting uh, our initiative to the other initiative. Um, another Good progress of initiative is Transparent Data Initiative, uh, which is uh, very well known as uh, Landwatch Asia. It is led by one of regional members, NGOC. And you can enjoy the Landwatch Country Monitoring Report through their uh, online website, which is, uh, I think, uh, they develop very much. Uh, one minute. Uh, sorry, it's a, our it's a co-chair of these sessions. It's a Tila Martha is here, so I would like to welcome to her. Please come, come this side. Yeah. Uh, in Bangladesh, everything's are in track accordingly, so that don't do worry. Thank you very much. I know that each country has their own unique in order to promote the NES as the 
more strategic way in promoting uh, people-centered land governance. But we should define what is really our strategy as our collective actions in country level. Uh, in our experience in Indonesia, uh, I know that maybe uh, ILC trying also to what to make NAS more more strategic in order to get more memberships in trying to promote the, the NAS. But in Indonesia, for example, we cannot open our engagement with some egos. For example, in Indonesia, it's impossible for us to collaborate with World Bank, even though World Bank is uh, ILC members. But it will be ruining our strategy if we invite World Bank into our nest. So although in some countries maybe it's okay to open to World Bank, but for Indonesia case, it's a bit impossible. Maybe can dialogue, but we cannot work together because it's more ideology for us. So we need to define what is really our strategy or, or our platform. What is really next platform um, from Asia? So in the assembly of member, we can also voicing the platform uh, for NES in Asia. That's my, uh, my point. as well and can be more participatory and inclusive because at times if you are working with World Bank, the other movements really are reluctant to work with you. So that's one of the uh, transformations that India has uh, decided to, uh, you know, begin the journey uh, on. The second is we are working with the around one lakh uh, people in different and we have as nest members 15 of us are working right now and we are working uh, with eight uh, community based organizations and uh, these are most marginalized and vulnerable sections which includes tribals pastorals dalits farmers women um, network um, and uh, small and marginalized women uh, farmer farmers network uh, in this uh, one year, we were able to, uh, uh, you know, ensure land titles for 5,000 uh, um, tribals, as in uh, individual forest rights. We were able to have uh, uh, ensure titles for community forest rights for around 100 village. Uh, villages. Um, we were able to have access and control over common uh, uh, land for 7,600 acres of land. Uh, uh, 5,000 families uh, in India is working on natural farming uh, with uh, the help of uh, the uh, members and it does have ripple effect. We, are just we have just counted the ones which we have supported directly. Uh, we are working with 120 faith gardens and it is a huge success because now other um, other agencies are also try wanting to try tie up with uh, uh, the members uh, to promote the faith gardens in uh, the respective regions. We have mobilized more than 50,000 people on land rights in different occasions and different platforms. Um, we were able to, uh, that was a big uh, thing, I mean right now India has a very repressive government. So in this context, uh, actually getting into uh, the bill of homestead land was a big success uh, in one of the provinces of the country. Uh, and uh, the commons, national commons policy is being drafted uh, uh, this year. And uh, we were also able to have uh, to collect a status report for uh, the forest rights in two, in three of the uh, states, which is a big uh, tool for advocacy for the social movements and the community-based organizations plus the government as well to take the cognizance of the status of forest rights in these three states. Um, uh, we were able to document uh, the land rights struggles of ten. Uh, uh, movements in 10 states across the country and uh, we were also able to have produce a research report of landlessness in India and this would be a, a big weapon to work on the land reform agenda which is a forgotten agenda for the country. Thank you so much.
now uh, because our, our focus is on the um, land rights, I mean land registration and uh, forest governance, and also um, uh, that focus on also indigenous people and uh, fishery community and forestry community. So uh, just as of uh, this uh, August, we we got some approval from the Ministry of Environment on the another tens of community forestry, um, which is add up to the, it's, it's cover more than uh, uh, 3,000 uh, hectares. Um, and also, in, in, the, in the last, in the finals of the, uh, they call uh, environmental and natural resource uh, court, um, over 45 uh, percentage of uh, CSO common has been uh, taken by the the, the Ministry of Environment for, for the finalize of the and adoption of the environmental code. And in relation to the uh, communal land title, it's a uh, previous report was like 19 uh, communal land title for indigenous people has been approved, but up to now it's 24. It's covered uh, uh, 24 uh, communal land title has been approved by the Ministry of Lands, uh, covering uh, uh, 22, uh, uh, 22 hec uh, 22,000 hectares of the land in Madulkiri, Ratanakiri, and uh, Stung Drang. And of course, uh, in relation to the um, f a farmer, uh, Agricultural uh, cooperative with uh, these three uh, uh, agricultural cooperative has been approved by the ministry, no, by the provincial uh, department of the of the agricultures. So we do have uh, our NES has tried to engage with non-member and uh, member organizations, and if we uh, make a number like more than eight, uh, uh, non-member organization has been engaged in the NES. So covering uh, um, age indigenous uh, people organization, uh, 14, uh, 14 agricultural corporate, uh, cooperatives, and uh, more than uh, 40 uh, non-CSO, I mean like uh, CSO and uh, governmental organizations. So of course we did engage uh, in the regional level, for example, uh, um, a business and Human Rights Conference in uh, Chiang Rai just recently, and also CBI's, uh, um, yes. So, so that's uh, just an update. Uh, of course, the challenge is we still have because of the current uh, political uh, situation in Cambodia. Uh, we we uh, we try to be also uh, caution on that too. Thank you. Thank you. Now, good morning, uh, everyone. I uh, I am. Uh, Aitkul Burkhanov, uh, Head uh, Kaflu. Uh, our facilitator uh, uh, nowadays uh, is in a uh, field trip, and uh, I, uh, I want to uh, short inform uh, about Ness uh, Kyrgyzstan. But my English is uh, very bad uh, for me, uh, help uh, Natalie. <laughs> Okay. Уважаемые участники сегодняшней ассамблеи, как уже Саурлин отметил, действительно, НЕС Кыргызстан, так можно сказать, уже организован и начал ну, начальную стадию работы. И я хочу просто сказать, вот некоторые направления, некоторую, некоторые направления деятельности, которые НЕС Кыргызстан ставит перед собой. Good morning, dear participants of uh, the assembly. Uh, as uh, already Saraline uh, noted, that uh, NES in uh, Kyrgyzstan is already established. At, uh, it is uh, at the early stage of uh, its development. And uh, now I would like uh, to inform you briefly about uh, the main direction, uh, directions uh, that uh, we would like uh, to follow. Uh, 
НЕС Кыргызстан сейчас активно, ну, в лице фасилитатора активно участвует во всех мероприятиях членов АЭЛСИ. И кроме этого, НЕС активно участвует во многих мероприятиях неправительственного сектора, но и некоторых мероприятиях государственных структур. Uh, now uh, NES uh, in Kyrgyzstan, represented by NES uh, facilitator, uh, proactively participate uh, in uh, all events, uh, meetings uh, of uh, NES uh, members in Kyrgyzstan, uh, also in uh, meetings of uh, non-governmental uh, uh, organizations and uh, other agencies. И в мероприятиях, которые были, то есть после участия этих мероприятий, НЕС сейчас ставит задачу, основную из основных задач, работать, активно работать об укреплении межсекторальной связи, межсекторальной связи, всех уровней, там, государственных и неправительственных, частного, частной структуры. Uh, in addition uh, to such events, uh, now NES in Kyrgyzstan also plans uh, to uh, work on strengthening of intersectoral connection, strengthening of intersectoral connection, uh, connection between uh, uh, governmental agencies uh, and uh, all other levels. И очень приятно то, что а, платформу NES очень поддерживает как а, негосударственные структуры, а, неправительственные организации. И приятно то, что очень а, платформу а, начи, а, планируют и хотят поддерживать и работать вместе а, государственные структуры а, нашей республики. And uh, it is uh, very pleasant that uh, NES platform is uh, supported uh, by uh, non-governmental organizations in our country, and it is very pleasant that uh, NES platform is uh, uh, supported by governmental uh, authorities too. И очень приятно то, что мы информировали правительство нашей республики и правительство республики, но одобрило и выразило желание поддержки работы НЕС Кыргызстана у нас НЕС Кыргызстана. And uh, we are happy that uh, when we informed our government about uh, NES uh, platform work in Kyrgyzstan, uh, the government uh, supported and expressed uh, their will to uh, work uh, with uh, this platform in the country. Спасибо. Thank you. Thank you for comments or inputs which you add on Saralin's product. Uh, presentation so I'm sure Saraldin made a note on that and add on it. Now we will take tea break and Saraldin also have a suggestion we can have a group photo now before going to the tea but I think still we are waiting no missing some people no so we can have the before the lunch something or because huh? the photo because some many people are on the way Okay, so five minute tea breaks and uh, Harafik will announce where we will get the tea or coffee. F 15 minutes, sorry. Then we will come again and CBA representative can give their inputs, additional inputs. Thank you. Platform means uh, initiative, yeah? uh, a movement, uh, a group of people that are uh, doing activity under ILC Asia. So there are 20 out of 20 you can join one, two, or more than one. Yeah? So, but especially NES, of course, you cannot join the other country NES. You need to check NES in your country. Uh, but for CBI, you can check the documents. You will see there are 12 uh, uh, initiatives where you can approach the first, first maybe the most uh, reliable is the host. The host of the uh, respective CBI is there. And, but also the members uh, may be uh, approached. Yeah? So then 
the decisions not in this forum decision will be in the member of the platform itself okay do we receive that uh, new member to our platform or not so it's the discussion amongst them maybe online through email <coughs> can be done in order to accept or not normally will be accept if you want to uh, to apply for uh, to join a particular uh, platform that is my additional uh, thank you chair okay, thank you. Um, Dinesh yeah just uh, want to add about the CBI 3 I think uh, Solin mentioned well that we progress last from two years as well. Uh, uh, before two days ago, we have a uh, rangeland global gathering at uh, Jakarta, and uh, we have a good discussion uh, over there. More than 65 participants were there to discuss from the Latino and Africa and Asia. And we have a thematic group was decided within the rangeland initiative, uh, uh, the CBI3. Uh, so that was the one sharing with the, this uh, uh, assembly. Another thing, uh, from the Central Asia and South Asia, both we have a the alliance building up, up and with the NACE also, but without, without NACE we have a alliance building and knowledge generation uh, programs is going on in the different countries within the South Asia and Central Asia. So this is just update for this forum. Yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Dinesh. Hijaba, please. After that. Our Rangeland Initiative in Asia, we are expanding and we are connecting the my members who are working on pastoralists in rangelands, in Central Asia and both South Asia, and we are uh, documenting good practices and sharing experiences. And currently, in this year, we are included all Central Asian countries, new countries also involved in Uzbekistan and uh, Turkmenistan from Central Asia. And second one is we are influencing and mobilizing our members through the influencing on country level, improving Kenya systems. Because in Central Asia, we have a lot of issues on transition, on land management. So, and lastly, we decided to, because members expanding, we are trying to work on by clusters of issues, by clusters. And certainly, we are, we are influencing on policy through the approving laws and sub laws. In two countries, now Mongolia and Uzbekistan, we are trying to have uh, pasture law, special. In other countries, we are working on how to support government, how to lobby, and other important uh, sub laws, some such as things. And lastly, we are working uh, in South Asia and Central Asia, we are also connecting with global range and initiative. So we are sharing experiences, not only uh, regional, sub-regional, but also we are exchanging at global level through different activities. Thank you, that's to add only. Okay, thank you, Hijaba. Please, yeah. Fidyaji. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the one thing that was missing here was uh, that apart, the study that we are conducting, uh, most of the partners have sent us the uh, report. And there are something, something more probably by the uh, middle of October, we will be able to gather all these uh, information from uh, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, uh, Indonesia, as well as Cambodia. Cambodia uh, need to send it uh, because our aim is that the recommendations of the uh, group should come from their host, their countries. So that is one aim when we uh, uh, tried this uh, re report, the aim was to uh, bring success stories and failures of other countries together and so that we can learn. That was a uh, learning thing and for that we can advocacy, advocacy through the NEST platform. So that is uh, important that CBI's uh, lessons can be implemented through our uh, respective NEST uh, programs. We are planning to organize one international workshop for our uh, part organization uh, to uh, basically um, uh, this was the demand that how our activists know uh, the working of the UN mechanism, particularly CEDA and other uh, other things, the Human Rights Council. So we are planning it in uh, November or December, uh, probably in one of the countries. So that was the update. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So when the results of that eval midterm evaluation was presented to the council, a number of challenges were were identified. And then uh, to respond to these challenges, uh, a committee, a subset of the council was created to take a first crack on terms of responding to these challenges. 
the committee uh, did not meet physically. It was just a, a virtual exchange of ideas. The secretariat prepared a number of briefing documents uh, which the committee uh, provided feedback uh, on a per document basis. Then uh, I think uh, last week or two weeks ago, the secretary tried to consolidate the various documents into one uh, briefing document which will be presented today. Uh, but uh, in the process, there were a number of issues still within the committee that has not yet been uh, clarified or agreed upon. So for this, uh, I'll hand it to Stefano to further explain what has, uh, what has been the process and what has the current uh, shape or picture of this new model. Step. Uh, and still, uh, they told us that the, the overall strategy of ILC is bold, is valid, it has meaning, uh, and is being useful and used by our members. Uh, and again, they told us that the NES is a good vehicle to bring about change in the context of where our membership operates. Um, and then they gave us uh, a few hints or a few uh, elements for suggestions, which don't recall, 33 recommendations. And the Council of the ILC decided to group these recommendations into uh, three blocks. Uh, a number of them were really looking at the sort of operating modalities. And the council told us this is something that we, we leave it to the <laughs> operation team to, to sort out. Uh, others were looking at the way the strategy is implemented, which is the operating model. Uh, and the, another set of recommendations were looking at how ILC measures its results. So the last two blocks, which is how we measure our results and uh, how the strategy is implemented, has become the basis for the formation of a, of a working group of the, of the, co of the council. Uh, for Asia, Don uh, volunteered, or was volunteered, I don't remember now what. <laughs> anyway, Don gave us a lot of his time and, uh, and uh, there's been discussions on uh, five items. Um, the committee concluded first part of his job by uh, organizing a bit of the discussions we had uh, within the committee on uh, how members should be supported, what is the best uh, financing support model for membership, or what is the best way members should be helped to plan uh, and uh, to report on the results. And then they ask us to consult with the, with the, regional, uh, with the regional assemblies so that there will be an, an extra three months to take into account the feedback from these various regional assemblies and try to bring them together in the Council of uh, December. So the members of the committee will continue. Uh, if there is renovation of the Council, still the old members of the committee will continue and maybe this will in be integrated with new Council members. So the idea is that uh, this session now, one hour and a bit we have, I guess, uh, can be used to basically present not the entire process, but like the issues where the committee believed it's important to, to get feedback. And then we open it up for feedback. I take note of it. Uh, and then uh, we try to summarize we done. And then uh, this is what we take back to the committee. So first of all, uh, what was the evolution? No? I mean, what is the, the, the key things that um, we think should be different in the next triennium? Uh, the first thing, I guess, is uh, the ILC, which is obviously a coalition of peer members, has developed in the last few years a number of uh, initiatives and platforms, no? the NES, the CBIs. Uh, so ILC has, is increasingly becoming a coalition of different platforms. So every member can engage in different many ways in ILC. This is good. ILC is much more polycentric than it used to be before. Uh, many of us don't know me, don't know Secretariat, and it's good because there are many ways to engage with ILC. Um, so as a coalition of platforms, what we want to see in the future, what we want to see more in the future is capacity building for transformation of these platforms. No? So building the capacities of this platform to, to be transformative in the agendas they have. Now this implies, uh, I guess, two broad shifts. 
Uh, the first one is the, strat the, strat the, the, the initiatives have to be more strategic and longer term, and the support to the initiative has to be at the same time more longer term, both financial and technical. Uh, and these initiatives have to link well with the regionalization process. So they have to link well together and help ILC Asia to get increased visibility or to get increased positioning and to be increasingly recognized. So all has to be led by members. Uh, next, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the, as I said before, the committee has focused on... Uh, um, some broad change areas. Eh? Uh, they identify four areas. How the work of the ILC is planned, so planning. How the work of ILC uh, initiatives is supported. Uh, how the work of ILC is eventually financed. And uh, how do we measure the achievements? I will highlight a few changes eh? and then we go to, to broad questions. So when it comes to planning, I guess we started this already. So some of these things maybe are not very new for you, but uh, maybe not every initiative is at the same level. Eh? But, uh, so members should be more and more encouraged to plan three-year cycle or five-year cycle, so longer-term planning. Uh, and the planning should be as it is in, I would say, most of the cases, uh, but as participatory as possible, so with true members' involvement into it. Uh, and obviously, the, the, the regional assemblies is the place where the final agreement among these various initiatives is, is taken. So the regional assemblies are, uh, uh, are having an additional role, which is that of defining the priorities of the region and the overall also, in, together with the steering committee, the overall financial allocations and the overall uh, strategic views of the, of the regional initiatives. Um, this implies also alliance building, I mean planning for alliance building, planning for resource mobilization, so it's, it, it, it's quite important additional set of tasks for the regional assemblies. Uh, then on the supporting side, platforms are led by members, I guess this is already the case, supported by one host or more host organizations and facilitators. Um, members will access increasingly more a range of capacity building opportunities some of which uh, will be designed or co-designed or they already exist and will be increasingly open to members as designed by global members. Huh? We have a number of global members and they have own training capacities or capacity, or, or capacity building uh, curriculum or other things. So we try to convince them to increasingly open those to our regional and national initiatives. We want to see more grassroots and uh, women's organizations that play lead roles in uh, regional platforms uh, at all levels. This was one of the recommendations of the midterm review. Uh, they say ILC should create more space for grassroots to be really in the driving seats. Um, grassroots members. Uh, the support team will be uh, enhanced, but at the same time with a more regional face. So there will be more regional support and uh, uh, maybe less global support or more specific targeted global support. And uh, as I said before, uh, we will try to make sure that the global members and the global event donors can sync better with the regional strategies and with the uh, some of the regional initiatives. The financing. The idea is to be more predictable in terms of funding which is made available to each initiative and also to be more longer term and finally to be unrestricted in the funding we give. That means we support what we find is core in each and every initiative, in each and every CBI, the facilitation, the communication, a good resource mobilization strategy, or the need to build the capacity for good resource mobilization strategy. Uh, and we will finance less, uh, like the daily, the daily living of each platform, which can be indeed financed through the support of the members themselves in the platforms. No? So in a way, ILC money will be core, so can be used uh, without any restriction. But at the same time, we will emphasize that core is what you need to have 
a vibrant functioning platform. <laughs> uh, and then the platform is participated by a number of members and there is all set of activities that these members do already and they should be made available to the rest of the platform to the extent that is agreed during planning. Um, so members will be supported if needed to raise operational funds. Um, and uh, the ILC support obviously we have to think of a phasing out process. This is not happening overnight obviously. This has to be uh, sort of planned in advance. But the idea is that building the capacities also implies uh, focusing on core financing, supporting finance or fund raising of these platforms, uh, and also phasing out as these platforms become more, I mean, stronger and uh, more sustainable and more able to attract new, new, new partners and new financiers. On the measuring of the results, we have introduced in the overall uh, ILC framework. Uh, we have, first of all, tried to simplify. The MTR asks us to simplify our planning and monitoring procedures. They are far too complex. We will do that. We have not yet done it. So we hope that core funding comes with less burden in terms of reporting. Huh? <laughs> but an agreement among the members of the platform of what is important to report. Yes really connected with the last uh, two years um, uh, activity and action plan. And still dealing with the uh, cast land and also indigenous people as far as my uh, information in Chittagong Chittagong Hill Track. Chittagong Hill Track. Um, and in Cambodia, yeah, despite of the situation politically in the context of Cambodia now, they are still trying to get engagement with their government, with a strong member we have there, uh, Star Kampuchea, um, Yorong and Europa And uh, the work is more technical on how to achieve some uh, title on um, Accessing land and uh, getting land from uh, the current conflict that they have in, 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 in many provinces. Um, in India, in the next three years, uh, they give us summaries of on how the land forum can engage with much more uh, audience, the national level, or how to engage with the NDP, uh, India land, ILD, India land. For India Land and Development Forum, and also trying to engage also directly in the in the practice level on how people have access uh, to, to land and uh, to their land rights. Uh, for the next three years, Indonesia also plan to have uh, this uh, new uh, transformation of the engagement where it is planned to be engaged with the, some other big platforms other the new policies and uh, also dealing with directly with so-called uh, implementation of the uh, LPR Act. In Nepal, um, Nepal will be the first country of does support monitoring land uh, program of the ILC. Uh, so we will see the result in next year. And it means it will connect with the uh, implementation of the national land strategy on how they engage with the Ministry of Land Reform and Ministry of uh, Environment and Forestry and also with some uh, bigger platforms so called uh, FFP. Um, in the Philippines, um, continuing the existed uh, action that they have done over the last three years, they propose to to have a bigger uh, ambition. And you see, uh, in the coming three years, they expect to that they may be able to mobilize uh, 
the distribution through the engagement with the government more than 600,000 uh, hectares. It's a very high ambition, I guess. And then also engaging with the national level policy on land and LUA. In Kyrgyzstan, they send initial activity they have to do in the next three years on engaging with the pastoral lands, pastoralist group, and also engaging with forest issues and also uh, agriculture. There are three sectors uh, that uh, they want to engage with in Kyrgyzstan by inviting more participation of the international governmental organizations to the platform. The second one is uh, uh, I forget something, I think, Mongolia. Uh, Mongolia also there, they sent also their initial plan and uh, most, more or less not really uh, different with the Kyrgyzstan uh, uh, planning. Okay, now we move to the, the second type of platform, second type of engagement that we have, so-called uh, CBI. CBI is cross-country initiative or commitment-based initiative. For those who are new, commitment means refers to 10 commitments that we have, yeah? If you check the uh, website, you will easily understand what is the, the 10 commitments of the ILC. Uh, currently, we have 12, it's a very huge, 12 initiative, 12 platform, 12 big car in Asia. And um, similar, the planning also has to be three years, uh, three triennial, and there will be initial budget also that will be released in December. Um, the, as far as document that we receive from all of you, it will be more on improving the governance, uh, advancing the membership, and also in terms of uh, the reach of diversity of the member, uh, which is very much uh, coloring the next uh, CBI. Just very short on rank line initiative in the coming three years, they still keen to work on policy framework uh, in, in many national level, despite of they expand to more than three countries as far as my uh, document uh, mentioned. And also more working on capacity building uh, to strengthen the coalitions in the Asia level. The host of the Serang Land Initiative in the regional level are two countries, India and um, Mongolia. Uh, the second part, the second page of this, uh, ensuring gender justice is led by India, and we already heard some of their development just this morning, and, and the coming initial plan will be more scaling up the uh, activity they have now, among other, to increase uh, women recognition of our community property rights, both government and community level. Regarding to this uh, CBI 5, indigenous people land, um, they will more than will down to the national level policy uh, screw uh, in many countries and uh, as and it will be brought to the regional level yeah so there will be a process of uh, integrating their uh, initiative to the uh, existent national level uh, uh, strategy The second page of this locally managed, uh, locally governed ecosystem, uh, we got some uh, insight from the members that they are going to more focus on capacity building and uh, also um, engaging with the regional players on this related platform. Yeah, 
intergovernmental policies recognized, it means the in national level and regional level they are going to engage with. Um, land rights for rural youth. Um, this next three years, they plan to have a more engagement of youth in the land uh, issues, especially youth farmers, uh, which is uh, hosted by Indonesia and India. CBA, CBA 8, Sustainable and Transparent Data, uh, so-called Land Watch Asia. Uh, will uh, still focus on what they have done in the last couple years on collecting the data on land and producing tools as well as um, uh, developing a guideline on how to deal with uh, land uh, conflict. This uh, this one is a new one, and they also want to advance uh, the membership with the new ILC members. So it will be uh, the focus of the next uh, PAES in order to develop research and also networking the researchers in Asia. The CBI 910 uh, lead by ANGOK uh, more focus on engaging, engagement with the regional players such as, uh, as SARC, uh, ASEAN, and also other uh, regional level organizations, including uh, many institutions in national level dealing with human rights, national human rights institutions that uh, for quite a long time already uh, engaged very well with the platform. Maybe back a little bit, back. Um, no, yes. Um, actually, Solidarity Fund is also one of the uh, CBI 910. It can be seen as a CBI 910, yeah? So please uh, consider that it is also a part of this. A commitment. Yeah. This leadership program uh, expected to be started this year, maybe in November, by our friends from AFA and KPA, I guess. Yeah. And we will see what they are going to do in the coming three years. But this is uh, the last part. Um, Based on the discussions we have already, I think uh, many of you know that um, the budget uh, based on the new operation model uh, will be focused on facilitation, connection, and communication process. Yeah? Uh, just so it will be in the level of strategic. But, but of course we need to discuss a little bit more on when we are going to implement this because this is so-called the discussion is going on, but the decision can be made now, and the implementation can be next year, but can be 2045. So the implementation sometimes is uh, it's not similar with the decision making. Okay, and then initial seed funds, as explained. Uh, by Secretariat uh, as far as my concern and the information sent to us by the budget committee is about 3.6 million for three years and for the governance and assembly and everything is about 800,000. So it will be the so-called core funding of the ILC Asia for 20 platforms that we have currently in this region. So, uh, lastly, but very important, uh, from this uh, forum, I, I propose that uh, regional assembly may approve that uh, the new ICS steering committee may develop ILC strategy paper 
21st. Why we need to revise? Uh, why we need this forum to approve that we need to have these uh, revisions? First, because we need to respond to the growing initiative platform members in the last two years. There are some, some initiatives now which is not really connected with the strategy that we have. And also a response to the midterm review results. Any of you that haven't have the midterm review re results uh, will be sent by the uh, Secretariat, by the Regional Coordination Unit. I heard some of you didn't reach that report. And also the third one, to respond to the new operation model. Yeah, we need to respond whether we make an adjustment in Asia or we are going to be similar with the other regions like Latin America or Africa or Emena. Of course, we need to sharpen the priority of the regions. Yeah? And we need to see also the current situation, <coughs> political situation in Asia, which is very high, uh, <coughs> not unstable. So uh, those kind of situations need also to be addressed by the stra new strategy. And yeah, especially I mentioned youth inclusion in the strategy. Strategy also has to mention uh, youth, which is uh, excluded for quite some time. Um, uh, the last part of the strategy should be also mentioned or included or integrated the strategy of mobilizations of the resources and in order to make sure and to, to, to guarantee the sustainability of the existed 20 platform that we have currently. So this is the strategy, expected strategy that we have uh, for the next three years. At least, it, uh, it, of course, there will be no uh, difference from the current CBI and NES that we have because based on the global strategy, it, we meet actually the target. Yeah? The target is eight. If we want to add more, yeah, it's, it's possible, of course, because this member can decide anything. But so far, the target is already reached, eight uh, national engagement strategy. And it means, uh, and also CBI now we have almost 12. So 20 is, I think, uh, maximum, uh, uh, in quotes, maximum machinery that we can drive. Yeah. So this is the imaginary picture of the next strategy that we will have in the coming uh, three years. So I need uh, decisions on that particular at the end. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But, uh, we are supposed to approve the proposed work plan and strategies. Am I right in, in the program? The, the decision point is that we are to approve what you presented. <laughs> okay, no? uh, since uh, yeah. shifting to a new model will be a very, very critical task. We very well know that, no? And uh, in your proposal, you showed that one of the main activities is this shifting to this new model. And more importantly, in number seven, you said that you're proposing activities on, uh, can, can you put that on the screen, please? The last one, I think. Second last. Yeah. The number, it says sharp, it says here response to new operating model. And then the last one is building resource mobilization platform strategy. I think it would be very important for us to understand the details of these two items. The response to the new operating model of ILC and building resource mobilization platforms. I, 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 I'm not expecting to have a full detailed discussion, but at least give us an idea on how this should be done because it is not as simple as just shifting to the new model. 3.6 million for three years, funding meetings, and the expectation of raising the bigger counterpart funds needs a lot of discussions. So would it be possible for us to even, to even consider, uh, before considering approving the proposal, to get an idea of how do you think this should be done, specifically number three and number seven.
So, may propose that once it is stable, we are very respectful and we are very happy about it, considering various sectors of different sectors and we know all these three uh, uh, strong organizations of Asia and Pacific region, we, we endorse it for the assembly. I propose to endorse it and to, tomorrow in the steering committee it goes for further uh, clarity and etc. I think Floor will give the big clap. <laughs> now we are. It's a proposal. I think it's a. I'll give. No, no. Okay. Uh, regarding the venue for coming regional assembly, streaming, stream, sorry, steering committee will send the call for proposal and each country is requested to the, your interest of proposal. So committee will, ACI steering committee will decide based on your interest and proposal. Is that okay? If so, give the clap, please. It's all people are very passive. So we are on the final uh, session. So I invite Don Marquez for the day summary. Please, Don, my co chair. Thank you, Jagat. I invite our regional <laughs> facilitator to run us, run us through on the summary. of the speaker will become from uh, National Organizing Committee on Peasants uh, Issue and also from Indigenous uh, Group. So there will be total, in total will be five speakers in high level panel. And then after that we will close the sessions and we will have lunch. Uh, lunch will be provided at uh, outside not in the building because the building is the museum. It's really historical building, Asia Africa Conference building. So uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry, uh, I, I need to say that because that's a museum, so we are not allowed to eat and drink while in, inside the building. So coffee break and lunch will be provided outside. Uh, there will be also, the rest of the, there will be in total 1,000 people including you, 500 will be from international and then five, 550 will be from national delegations. And because of tomorrow is the National Peasants Day, uh, I forgot something, tomorrow is National Peasants Day, so there will be also, uh, after that, in parallel, there will be a senior official meeting, in parallel. So from 2 p.m. until 
four, I guess, four p.m. There will be senior official meeting uh, in Eroya. So we hope that all country they have the delegations from the government side uh, is expected to be joined in the senior official meeting. The senior official meeting is hosted by President Executive Office, and uh, there will be eight countries, eight countries who send their government representative will be joined in this senior official meeting at a Royal Hotel. So they will not join uh, our session in Asia Forum in Gedung Merdeka Building. And then after that, there will be multi-stakeholder discussions, uh, still Asia context. And then the last sessions will be, we will um, recognize uh, some figure, some figure from Asia to receive a recognition that we call lifetime, Asia Lifetime Achievement Recognition on Land Right. So those sessions will be delivered by Asia Steering Committee members. We will announce the four figures that receive Asia Lifetime Achievement Recognition. And then the, the whole day will be closed by the mayor of Bandung. So the mayor of Bandung will also welcome you and invite you to, to be his guest because we will organize one gala dinner on 25 at the Plaza, uh, Plaza Park belong to the city host on 25. So I think that's the overall program for tomorrow from morning until afternoon session. I think, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Dewi. I think it's uh, very much complete. And our responsibility actually until tomorrow. And, and then uh, the day after tomorrow will be the responsibility of the global secretariat to arrange everything. So we'll be happy that we will be able <laughs> to tomorrow evening. But of course, we still remain uh, guiding you on anything you needed. Yeah? So please contact us in case uh, anything needed for the whole uh, Global Land Forum until 27. Thank you very much and have a nice uh, time in Bandung and enjoy also in the coming two hours your dinner. I forgot something. Uh, for those, because I know some of, the, of you is didn't recognize that we have a field visit program. So uh, in the last three days, we have field visit program organized by National Organizing Committee. There are five selected locations has been visited by 120 participants. Uh, the locations is in West Java, two locations, and then one in South Sulawesi and then in Jakarta. So the, those five locations has been visited. And the difference between uh, the previous Global Land Forum or field visit in Global Land Forum that all the participants uh, is stay in the community level. Tonight, spend, spend the night with the, the grassroots level. So that's uh, also the program.